Keith, Molly Hatchett is doing some fantastic business, not only in record sales, but sold out concerts as well. And this time they travel down to Atlanta, Georgia and play the fabulous Fox Theater. All Southern rock bands want to play the fabulous Fox Theater. And before the show, the boys do a promotional shoot that would just end up being their very last photo of all the original group together. Besides playing on the show, the band did some of their final promo shots of the actual Molly Hatchet the way it was. Things are starting to get a little heated up between different people in the band and also with management at this time. Ron, that's all I want to say about that because things are getting to the point to where they're going to be changing real soon. Keith, being the headlining act, that responsibility now goes to sound, staging, and lights. And while performing here in Atlanta, you had the opportunity to hook up with one of the premier sound and light companies in the area. A lighting company that started in 1975 in Atlanta, Georgia. It was uh, R.A. Roth. Well, Ron, it just so happens that today we've got an old friend of mine from Atlanta, Georgia, R.A. Roth, Robert Roth, who owned R.A. Roth Lighting. And today he's with us. And all I can say is thanks for you spending time with us today, Robert. When we go back in time, what do you remember about being out with Molly Hatchet? Hatchet was really on the way up. You guys were hot as firecrackers. And I remember very, very specifically um, seeing those guys and going, you know, listening to you guys do your version of Dreams and then the first two or three big hits. It was just a fantastic time. When you came aboard, you brought on uh, the trusses on the, uh, or, uh, spotlights on the trusses and you followed the band around. And when the uh, the band opened and there were, we had the intro of Fanfare for the Common Man and you had the idea of putting screams scrims, you know, in front of the uh, speaker stacks on either side of stage right and left. So when the timpanis hit on the beginning of Fanfare for the Common Man, it, one would light up and then the other would light up and then they would both light up. It was just uh, incredible the way you actually made Molly Hatchet bigger than life on stage and you gave the fans an incredible show. The other thing that was a big part of it was we had a gentleman by the name of Ron Strang, a very famous scenic painter, paint those backdrops. They were such a big part of the show because there were the album covers, of course, and you know that we would change the drops depending on what the guys were playing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I mean, it made a bigger life. It was just simply incredible. Well, we were all learning learning how to produce concerts back then. I mean, at the time, the the, the industry was young, and we were kind of blazing trails and trying to figure it all out. You know. You know, Robert, you and I had a great run together. I mean, I have so many great memories of all of it and the craziness of all those days. Are there any stories that you would like to share? I, I'm sure you must remember this because this was one of two or three times in my career where incidents happened during the show and the police cleared the crowd out on horseback. The band's on stage playing. This is long before metal detectors or anything like that. And somebody threw a Jack Daniel, <clears throat> excuse me, an empty Jack Daniels bottle and it hit Bruce in the forehead. Okay. So I'm out front watching all this, not knowing that's what happened. And I look up and all the guys look at each other and throw their guitars on stage and stomp off the stage without saying a fuck. Right. Well, then the fun started because the crowd decided to express their displeasure by throwing things at the stage. And I remember taking cover behind the backdrops as these bottles are coming in and breaking on the PA and on my lighting trusses and there's glass raining down. And I'm going, oh, we got a problem here. 
And this is the old Barton Coliseum. You know, you wake up in the morning and it smells like a cattle barn right. out back because that's what it was. Right. And that was pretty exciting. Robert, once again, thank you for your time spending with with us, you know, here on The Gatekeeper. And all I can say to that is stand by from Studio 1J in beautiful St. Augustine, Florida. Stand by. For more information and to watch previous episodes of The Gatekeeper, please go to the original Molly Hatchet Group or Gator Country Band on Facebook. Yeah.